have breaking news right off the top tonight. The search is over for two missing Isabella County teens who left their homes together nearly two weeks ago. The Isabella County Sheriff's Department has confirmed that 14 year old Braxton Wood and 13 year old Jaden Thomas have been found in Chicago, Illinois. The couple apparently took off in Braxton's mom's Ford Explorer. Their parents believe that the two were desperate to be together. The teens were supposed to start school last week at different high schools. We spoke with a friend of Braxton's parents. Here's what she had to say. A human rights ordinance is planned to be introduced in Saginaw Monday as a way to ban discrimination against lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender individuals. The ordinance is meant to protect the LGBT community and employment and public accommodations. We're heading to South Carolina tonight. There, a woman born with only one kidney is fighting for her life. That one kidney is failing, and her only shot of living is a transplant. Now her husband is spreading the word and giving the best chance he can for her to survive. Here's David Muir with this incredible story. Tomorrow kicks off Bay City's downtown restaurant week. You can enjoy a tasty meal and get a discount. 11 downtown eateries are offering specials starting tomorrow through next Sunday. We posted a link with more information on ABC12.com in the See It on TV section. Christmas Eve, Tuesday, December 24th. Consumers Energy says that it's bringing in a thousand extra crews to help get power restored. So far, though, little progress has been made getting the 60,000 customers in Genesee County and more than 18,000 in Shiawassee County back online. In the Shiawassee County Department of Emergency Management will be updating the community on the power situation. They do want us to pass along a list of warming centers this morning. Both the Salvation Army in Owasso and Corona High School are running climate day centers 24 hours a day. Breaking news tonight just into our newsroom. Search and rescue teams are suspending large scale searchers for 76 year old Darwin Smith. That means that only smaller search teams will be looking for him. Volunteers along with several search and rescue teams have spent days looking for Smith with no success in finding him. We get to the uh, warmer weather. You know, I'll take that 90 degree weather. I like that kind of weather. It could be the last one of the season. Yeah, it enjoy it while it lasts. Now that's from Secretary of State John Kerry saying to a Paris audience, this is not the time to be silent spectators to slaughter. He's of course talking about the ongoing effort by the Obama administration to rally support for military action in Syria after the use of chemical weapons. This is ABC 12 News at 11. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Siobhan Riley. Angela Brown does have the night off. New at 11 tonight, large parties in Genesee County are sending many minors to jail. Police tell us that two parties were near Fenton Road on the city's south side. Those parties were broken up by police this weekend. The first was Friday night. At least 20 arrests were made. Then last night, even more were given out. We will be in touch with police this weekend. We will let you know if anything develops. A Saginaw man charged with murdering his mother and young sister wants to represent himself at trial. Tomorrow, a judge is expected to rule on whether 22-year-old Stefan Roby will be able to represent himself. Roby is accused in the shooting death of his mother, Lee King, and 11-year-old Charlie King. The shooting happened on March 6th of last year. Roby told police that somebody broke into the house and killed his mother and sister. However, a medical examiner contradicted his story. Police are interviewing witnesses after an early morning shooting in Saginaw. It happened around 5 o'clock this morning. A man was shot inside of a home in the 800 block of South Mason. He was treated for his injuries at an area hospital. Police are not releasing his name or his current condition. There's no suspect information at this time either. A Flint woman remains in critical condition tonight after she was shot in the chest Saturday afternoon. We first brought you this story Saturday night at 6 o'clock. Police believe the shooting was the result of an altercation between the woman and a man. The man was taken into custody last night. Since then, we've learned that the man in custody this weekend is 21 years old. Police say the two have children together. The names aren't being released at this time. Flynn is working to get out from under emergency manager control and tomorrow city council could sign off on a plan that gets the ball rolling. ABC 12's Jennifer Prophet joins us live in the studio with more on tomorrow's meeting. Jen. Hi, Siobhan. City Council. Residents have complained for quite some time about a sinkhole that's making it very tough for drivers. As ABC 12's Emmy Lucas reports, a solution is on the way. What started out is 
Two people are behind bars tonight in relation to a video released on Facebook. We are not showing that video at this time. The video shows multiple adults yelling at, slapping and whipping a young boy. The boy claims to be 11 in the video, although his age is not yet confirmed. We've learned that two people behind bars are the woman referred to as the boy's grandmother in the video and the man recording it. The woman's actual relationship to the child is not yet confirmed, but police believe the man may be the child's mother's boyfriend. The incident happened in the 3100 block of Kleinpel in Flint. Flint police and Child Protective Services are investigating. The story is also gaining a lot of attention. Head to our Facebook page if you would like to join in on the conversation or follow the story on the most recent developments. You'll find a link to the article there. Mid Michigan saw some pretty beautiful weather and Kevin, how long is this weather going to stick around? Well, Siobhan, it does look like we'll see it. Before you head off on your morning commute tomorrow, you might want to take a look at tonight's gas gauge. We'll show you the average prices across Mid Michigan next.